Hey everybody, welcome back to the Feature Crew. Uh, exciting announcement today, we have OpenAI releasing a new model that is 4.1. Uh, they're billing this as their best coding model that's a non-reasoner. So we're going to put it through its paces and see if that's true. So this first test should be familiar to regular viewers of the channel. It is our uh, procedurally generated city simulation. And so we have this long prompt set up that should really highlight GPT 4.1's instruction following capabilities. We're going to see how many of these requirements it can implement. We're asking for distinct districts in our procedurally generated city. We're asking for population and NPCs, skyscrapers, houses, factories, everything. So we'll see how well it can do. We've got uh, the prompt loaded up in the playground. We usually go straight for the ChatGPT client, but this model is currently only rolling out in the API, so we'll test it here. All right, so it claims uh, to have completed all of the requirements, I guess. Yeah. Oh, at least all of them. That's interesting. All righty. Let's, uh... Oh, okay. Whoa. I mean, right off the bat... Oh, oh, oh. oh. They turned oh. down the simulation speed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's it's... definitely turn down that simulation speed. Okay. Okay, it happened to be night. It's yeah, interesting. Yeah. So, okay, so we can definitely see the light changing Yeah. with a day-night cycle. We can see a bunch of different colored buildings. There are some weird visual glitches as I pan around. Um, and yeah. as the... Oh, that might actually be weather, though. Ah, yeah, yeah, weather, yeah, fog. Oh, yep, wow. yep, yep, yep. So that wasn't a glitch. That was intentional. The revenue and the property value is just skyrocketing. Flying. Um, and the population as well. Okay. I am curious. Can we can... In? Are these cars... Uh, this is the max zoom. So, first of all, I want to keep my eye on one of these cars and see if they're moving, but it doesn't look like they Don't are. I don't think so. It moved a little bit, but... Uh, okay. We can make the city larger. I mean, this is pretty wild. Yeah, I mean, this is like a result that, that we would expect from a reasoner, and it might even be beating. I mean, go back, viewers, and, and check out our, mm. our previous attempts at this, but... I think like, it is. I think it's beating some of our previous attempts, or at least matching. And especially because this is one shot, right? Like, right. you know to what we were testing here, it got a lot of the bullet points and did a pretty good implementation. Like, I don't even think we got sandboxing in many of the reasoner attempts, right? Fair, I don't think it fully got to implementing the sandbox. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, the fact that it even has the drop down of the buttons, I am well impressed that it caught that though. It definitely, it definitely is impressive. I think this was a really impressive first result, uh, especially from a non-reasoner. Uh, but we want to see how far we can push this, so we're going to complain about some of the things we've noticed, like the uh, the simulation speed and the mismatch between like day and nights. So we're gonna we're gonna compile a list of improvements, and then uh, we'll come back with the uh, with the updated result. So we asked for some improvements. We asked for updates to how Zoom works, how the cars and NPCs move and are rendered, and then also just overall performance upgrades because we were noticing as we were typing out these refinements that my browser window crashed. We have a response here. Looks a little bit longer than the last time. I'm not going to read too much into the file. Let me just get that over in preview. All righty. a person walking around in the upper right corner. Maybe. Our Zoom can go further in. Yeah. The cars are moving smoothly while not on the roads. <laughs> yeah. Some of those might be people. Chris, where did you see the person? I think it's a lamppost up at the top now. There's like a white post. I think it's just Uh-huh. I see a lamppost um, over there as well. I guess we never, we also, what we forgot was to mention that Sandbox doesn't work. Oh, yeah. It feels like one of the performance optimizations was just lower FPS. Like, that's what it feels like was the major thing it tried to do. Or maybe it's just our screen, but... It it's not lower, lower FPS. It's lower, less lighting updates. But yeah, 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 the yeah, FPS yeah. is still smooth, but still the good. lighting is updating at longer intervals. Gotcha, gotcha. Interesting. So good to see that it was able to kind of like fix some of our, our main concerns and follow the instructions. Definitely supporting yep. this idea that uh, this model is better at instruction following than past models, particularly in the, in the non-reasoner camp. I think we want to do one last prompt. We'd love to see what it looks like when these simulations we go down to ground level. And so we're going to ask for like a street view and we're going to ask for like an overall overhaul into a real game and so we're going to let 4.1 suggest the features it wants to implement to make this sort of an interesting little playable demo game and then we'll have it implement that and show that to y'all all right so i'm asking for uh, an upgrade into a full first person game and in addition to just those first person controls we want a gameplay loop we want something to do down on ground level oh uh we're gonna see what 4.1 suggests missions and quests Ooh. economy participation roles core loop an inter walkable world with procedural interiors. All right. No way. Let's just see what no happens. No shot. Let's just see what happens. It, it did a, a really ambitious sort of yeah. full-on GTA code spec. Yet, right? it's just... If it does this, it'll be interesting to see how it does because this is very ambitious for one shot. And it's off. 
We're asking for the full game. It made a very ambitious spec. We'll see what happens. If, if there are building interiors somehow here, I'm gonna lose my mind. Okay, try. Uh, uh. No shot. Nah. Yeah, you know, I feel like it's gonna yeah. be a lot of errors, right? Yeah. Like we can't even lock control lock. I mean, you yeah. can see that it tried to add a mini-map. Obviously, we weren't expecting a ton. This was the challenge mode. We get, It gave itself a very ambitious prompt. Um, yeah. But, like, I'm excited to see as, as this gets out there in the world and people are playing around with it, like, wh what they're able to vibe code to see how it stacks up against yeah. some of the other top models. So in the coding domain, we'll definitely do a more of a head-to-head -head comparison. Let us know what models you want to see off the top of my head. I want to see Gemini. I want to see some of these other reasoners. I want to see Claude. Um, yeah, so definitely. we'll definitely do that. Moving on, GBD 4.1 is also supposed to be very good at long context. It has the longest context of any OpenAI model at 1 million tokens. And so one of our long context reasoning tests that we love to do is business reasoning, and we give it some topical research. In this case, it's about uh, the top agentic systems and how they're performing and how they're performing on benchmarks. And then we ask it to make uh, a recommendation to a hypothetical business, including charts and analysis. So we have the prompt set up, and as I mentioned, we have a long document containing a bunch of research about uh, AI agents and their benchmark performance, and this is all across different domains and different companies. Uh, and then we have a prompt that tees up our AI here as a technology analyst at Turing Labs, a fictional company that sells AI products. And so we're going to ask for recommendations and future projections about what the company should do. We got the results. We have the charts that it generated pasted here, and then we also have its recommendations at the end. In terms of the charts, the first chart, we didn't give it a ton of information on models. Uh, mostly GPT-4 is used to back a bunch of models in, in the benchmarks that it had found. And so uh, that's what came up on, on the uh, sort of model chart there. We're focusing way more in on this a sort of agent performance chart, which is much more in line with uh, the data we gave it and what we were asking yeah. for. And we were talking just offline about how this is one of the best charts, potentially the best chart we've ever seen a model come that's up right. with in these business reasoning tests. And the reason we say this is because it's really sort of telling a story. It conducted an analysis and then it's presenting that analysis in a way that a human can understand. So what did it do? It charted uh, benchmark performance uh, over time, sort of aggregated benchmark performance on these different benchmarks. And then it also charted where the sort of human level or perfect score level on those benchmarks is. So not only does this let us see that agent benchmarks are improving over time and quite rapidly at that, but that they're also approaching uh, very quickly, human level and perfect scores on some of these benchmarks. The other thing is that it did actually go and project out 2026. Mm -hmm. And we so, added that in the prompt, right? We it, said, give us yep. projections into the next year. So it's actually done that on this. And it'll be interesting to see, like, I, you know, I don't see those as unreasonable projections. I also could see just those scores getting broken and us needing new benchmarks or yeah. in the case yeah, of that absolutely. human level line, yeah, new benchmarks. So great job with this chart. Super impressive. And then uh, it also compiled this sort of model. The the content that we gave it was very old. Like it was focusing on agent models, GPT-4 and stuff. Um, so in the future, we can give it a lot more data and we can like retest that with other, other models to see how it's doing. I did like its prediction for the future to like, here's how to plan for a multi-agent committee specialist model as, uh, approaches as the best new practice, which combine various models for tougher tasks as the augment AI Sweet bench result demonstrates, right? Right. So it's a little mm -hmm. bit better than we've seen some of the non-reasoners do, which is just give us, based on everything you just gave me, here's what I think. So moving on to our last test, uh, some of the GPT series are billed as great agentic uh, executors whereas the reasoners are great agentic planners. Uh, so we do have a test for agentic planning and execution sort of all in one, and it's this maze test. So regular viewers of the channel will be familiar with this. We are going to give it a medium-sized maze to start with, and we'll see how well it can understand the rules and the world state, and then plan a path through the maze that doesn't violate any of those rules. This should be a good proxy for how it can execute agentically in an environment that it hasn't seen the specific instance of before, but with familiar rules. So we have this textual representation of the maze and then also some general instructions. It gives us a final path here in the format that we asked for, which we can then paste over into our tool and we can see the path the AI took. So unfortunately, this isn't the most surprising. What we expect for a test like this is that the agentic planning piece is really important because yep. uh, 
all of the future steps rely on previous steps. And so getting a solid plan that doesn't violate any of the rules is really important. We know reasoners are better at that. And then this kind of confirms that, that these GPT-4 non-reasoning models, the GPT series of models, even though it's getting really great at things like coding, implementing the specific files, it's still missing some of that planning piece that the reasoners are carrying. And so this is why personally, I'm super excited to see GPT-5 and that series of models start to unify a bunch of these strengths right. and sort of internally route to the right execution path when needed. But overall, I think what you know, OpenAI was talking with the release seems to be holding. This is a great one-shot coding model. Yeah. Um, it's fast. Even though it's, a, even though it's a non-reason, it doesn't seem to be losing that one-shot intelligence. So to Jacob's point, this seems like a great tool to be used in conjunction with, say, a reasoner, right? And it's almost probably alluded to that GPT-5 might be doing something along those lines of yeah. having reasoning and having something like this for better one-shot. And if you can combine them, then you get the best of both worlds, right? Like when we give it a huge prompt, that's where reasoner might kind of break it down and be like, okay, maybe we need to do it in multiple parts and maybe this is blah, blah, blah. Um, or bugs so, or iteration, right? right that right, inference right. time Even scaling stuff. Inference time scaling stuff to help it really understand the world and stuff. But overall, pretty good shot. Um, this is not like the best, best, but this, again, to what they were saying was going to be more improved, instruction following coding, pretty great showing so far. Yeah, I agree with that. Seems like a 2.5 compete more than a trying to top the world moment. Mm -hmm. I, think I expect that to come later in the week. We'll see. Might get another reason are announced. And then, yeah, I think it's interesting to think about this as them showing the pieces that lead to GPT-5 before GPT-5. Mm -hmm. Mm. Well, I think that's it. Thanks yeah. for watching, everybody. Uh, as always, leave comments in the chat. Tests you want to see, things you want us to loop back on, comparisons you want to see. We're reading them all, so definitely drop us a comment and look for some more exciting videos this week. I think it's going to be a busy week. Thanks, everyone. Awesome. Bye-bye.